immediately. <laughs> right. I know. My immediate reaction would be to curl up into a corner and cry because my parents weren't there, including now at 36 years old, you know, like, and maybe the fact that they are younger um, actually helps them to sort of just brush off the situation and adapt to it so quickly. I'm not sure. But um, yeah, they seem to be more excited by the possibilities of being without adults than they are terrified by that, those possibilities. Jalen? Um, I noticed that Right. So I, I, I thought that was interesting. Right. Watching the video and then. Because then it starts to feel like, okay, is this just like naturally what we are inclined to do as a species? Um, or is this something that we've been kind of conditioned to do by our society? And so we all just like agreed to kind of do it. But mm -hmm. in the video, it works very similarly, doesn't it? And we're going to watch more of that here in a minute. But it's like um, the first thing they do is they walk into the house and you remember there's a big bouncy ball there and they just kick the bouncy ball into the wall like the first thing they want to do is just like get in touch with sort of like their most base <laughs> needs and desires as little boys to just destroy things right they paint the walls they throw food all over the place like they just want to like it's just like about destruction and then the next thing they do is like shoot water guns at each other right so it immediately go goes into this almost like playing war type of attitude but while they're doing it they're introducing each other they're like what's your name what's your name as they're like shooting each other which i find fascinating because in the book there's a line that says we have to have names like there's this really important like way that we have to distinguish each other and understand each other's identities through names and then they start talking about which school you went to. Like, well, where do you live and where do you go to school? And it's kind of this way of like forming alliances and seeing kind of like where people are in the in the social hierarchy. Like if you went to public school, I know you're this kind of person. If you went to private school, I know you're this kind of person. They're kind of feeling that out in the video. And then you're right, immediately they form a leader. They, they choose a leader uh, because they don't like their situation anymore. And they have to figure out how to fix things. And the way that they do so is like, with one central figure, which it didn't necessarily have to be that way, right? They could have, I guess they could have elected a parliament if they wanted to, um, but no, they, they elect one leader that they think this is going to be the best way to govern this, this group of boys. Um, would you survive? <laughs> you're just like, and within five minutes, you're like, oh, I'm alone. It's, it's over for me. <laughs> yeah, you build a tree house. And <laughs> tame like some wild animal to be your pet <laughs> I don't think I yeah i would i would die so fast they'd be like we got to build a fire and i'd be like i'm out <laughs> i don't know i don't know how to do this <laughs> um it's kind of amazing the survival skills that they already have and you know maybe they were boy scouts or something like that maybe that's maybe it's instinctual that you kind of know what to do but they they do like immediately figure out a way to exist on this island in a way that I think is kind of like creative and inspiring in a weird way. Yeah, Brooklyn. It was kind of funny how like none of like neither Ralph or um, Jeff wanted to admit that they didn't really know how to exactly how to build a fire. And so they're like, all right, let's build a fire. And then they're like, yeah, okay, let's do it. Yeah. And they just kind of like wait and they're like, uh, and then they use their boss. Right. So they, they're just like, and there's a bunch of suggestions too. Like someone's like, I don't know, you like rub sticks next to each other, or I don't know, you, we need, we need matches, you know, and then somebody, uh, Jack steals Pinky's glasses and they, um, they use those, right? Um, yeah, there's a kind of like reluctance to admit when you're wrong. <laughs> um, is there anything other like truths about like, I guess human nature. Are there any other like truths about human nature that are coming forward in these first four chapters? Yeah. Yes. Um, it is like during World War, right after World War II, kind of during World War II, because they're on some sort of like flight for yeah. some reason. Um, and it talks about how uh, the pilot was yelling about the atom bomb. So it was written in 54. It's published in 54, but I think it's like set during like the end of World War II. Because initially, it's how like they were made, uh, like, and, 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 
been talking to them, mm -hmm. and it's been the same history from that being treated the same way as well. I feel like the person who has a cell, but they just have right. to kind of be normal. Right, but I wonder if also it's uh, the system of like electing somebody who has the kind of like symbol of control in their hand. Yeah, that's the same thing. That if that is prevalent. Symbol of control. Are they in the sense of both, like um, Ralph isn't like the natural leader, like he doesn't really actually affect them, he doesn't really react to these, mm -hmm. but they said that there's a staleness about him because he's being by himself. Yeah. And that's just so interesting. It's like that Which feels like, arbitrary, right? It is arbitrary. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but you think of like, um any kind of elections and isn't it also like kind of arbitrary too it's like either based on popularity or based on some sort of like thing that that person has that we can't fully identify or it's just who their father was or whatever like it does feel like it's not always the people who could be the best in charge that end up in charge um okay i want to look at two spots pretty quickly, just as a little introduction. So I have a different version than you because I'm annoying like that. So you're gonna go to chapter four, a few pages in, and you're gonna find the, the paragraph that starts the subsoil beneath. What page is it on when you get there? 62? Oh, it's the same for me. Maybe we have the same pages. Okay, so it says the subsoil beneath. Okay, look at the bottom of that, where it says here, invisible yet strong. So they've been throwing, they're trying to throw rocks. Actually, let's just read the whole paragraph. The subsoil beneath the palm trees was a raised beach, the gener and generations of palms had worked loose in this, um, the stones that had lain on the sands of another shore. Roger stooped, picked up a stone, aimed, and threw it at Henry but he threw it to miss. The stone, that token of preposterous time, bounced five yards to Henry's right and fell in the water. Roger gathered a handful of stones and began to throw them. Yet there was a space around Henry, Henry, perhaps six yards in diameter, he had coronavirus, into which he dare not throw. Here, invisible yet strong, was the taboo of the old life. Round the squatting child was the protection of parents and school and policemen and the law. Roger's arm was conditioned by a civilization that knew nothing of him and was in ruins. Okay, keep that in mind. And then I want you to look at the next page. Um, the paragraph that starts, he knelt holding the shell of water. It starts on the bottom of 63 and then goes into 64. All right, so this is Jack. He knelt holding the shell of water. A rounded patch of sunlight fell on his face and a brightness appeared in the depth of the water. He looked in astonishment, no longer at himself, but at an awesome stranger. He spilt the water and leapt to his feet, laughing excitedly. Beside the pool, his sinewy body held up a mask that drew their eyes and appalled them. He began to dance and his laughter became a bloodthirsty snarling. He capered toward Bill and the mask was a thing on its own behind which Jack hid, liberated from shame and self-consciousness. The face of red and white and black swung through the air and jigged towards Bill. Bill started up laughing. Then suddenly he fell silent and blundered away through the bushes. Jack rushed towards the twins. The rest are making a line. Come on, but we, come on, I'll creep up and stab. The mask compelled them. So you have like two things here that is kind of talking about masking and talking about like um, this idea of civilization training someone in a certain way. And then you have this idea of the mask and that the mask allows him to behave kind of like atrociously. So the question that I have here that I think is, it becomes a central question. I mean, it's the age old question that you've heard about in many classes, but I think it becomes a very central question to this, this story. Uh, let me think of how to word it. Is um, how much of violence and um, you can even think of like destruction or even like antisocial behavior. Is determined by society and how much is innate. So the question I'm asking is like, 
are these boys, do these boys sort of like resort to this violence where they're like, kill the pigs, let it throw? Is that, does that come from the way that they were raised in this World War II society where they are used to seeing war, where they are used to hearing things like the atom bomb, where militaristic presence is like everywhere, right? Does that come from that part of their lives? Or does it come from something like very innate within us that we are just like naturally violent kind of bloodthirsty beings and society has decided that we shouldn't be that way anymore. So there's this kind of like veneer over or like controlling sort of like barrier over us to keep us from acting out that way. So based on these two quotes that I that I showed you here, what, what do you think about the answer to that question so far according to this book? Yeah, I feel like it's more of the type when you said, um, but yeah. the having raised, like living in the, the time that they do live in, I feel like their actions with um, wanting to hunt and stuff mm -hmm. are influenced by the kind of person that was from yeah. the war, but yeah. I don't think that's what led them to the war. Okay, so they're kind of like copying things they've seen and heard in the war, but there's a deep, more innate sort of part of them that is causing them to want to act that way. Yeah, I feel like it's it's more of like in a way they kind of want to do something they can't do on like the mainland, I guess. Uh huh. Yeah. Because there aren't any military. Yeah, there's no restrictions, and yeah. so they're going to play out all their fantasies. <laughs> yeah, Professor. like a lot of like their old life and their traditions and um like societal values mm -hmm. are like um it's the taboo of the old life and just like kind of um when they're acting out this book at least describes um that they find it really free mm -hmm. so it kind of suggests that like they haven't been able to really do that before yeah so like yeah, so since they haven't been able to do that before and now they can, we're going to assume that this is them kind of like removing all taboos from their life, um, any restrictions that they had and they get to experience a kind of freedom then. Okay, let's just ask this like really from your gut, not from the book. Do you feel like that is a true way of looking at human beings? Do you think that if we got rid of all government and all parental authority and whatever, um, that we would behave in violent, <laughs> sadistic, mean ways towards each other you're saying yes yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i think it kind of goes against what the leaders want to do mm. i think the violence is where the leaders are like the seat of power because if you think about it like it's kind of irrational to think that humans are so organized and inherently violent that like we'll just pass it and they're not like going off to do with you yeah because they're not going to really explain how we can collaborate and build together in society to yeah. improve your human. Yeah. In my opinion, and I feel like it's kind of evident from the book, as soon as labels of power are thrown in, and as soon as, you know, uh, I guess inequalities are thrown in, where, like, for example, um, you know, pig food can't be put in the bag and left in the ground, or, you know, as soon as those kind of inequalities happen, I think that's when violence Ah, okay, yeah, are the inequalities and the assigning of labels and kind of tribes like that and saying like, you're lesser than sucks to your asthma or whatever, is that a way, is that part of us then innate, this kind of division and competition um, between groups, if not among groups? I think inequality is the current Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Feeling? Um, I feel like every human is like, just naturally judges like even like good or bad like it's just something it's just a human thing to do and i feel like um because on the first quote you read it says yeah. that um condition conditioned by a civilization so like they can't they feel bad and guilty like roger didn't want to throw a rock at him and like hit me with a piece of him would know it was yeah. wrong you know yeah and so i feel like they directed that violence that they want to do towards you know, yeah 
Yeah, so maybe there is also, maybe there is an innate part of us that is uh, violent and competitive and, and, and seeks out inequality and, and kind of um, competition in that way, right? But there might be another innate part of us that feels extreme guilt. Mm -hmm. Either that or society has conditioned us to feel guilt for the things that are natural to us, right? Because if you look at the rest of that quote, it says, uh, conditioned by civilization, and then the second part is that knew nothing of him and was in ruins. So there's something about civilization at the time of this is written, like you know, po right post World War II, getting into the the long Cold War that we have. That said, the way that society has conditioned people also is not working. So that we see these same behaviors played out on the global stage in the same way that it is on this little island. Ella, um, I feel like with the uh, um, humans have the innate thing to point out to be like, yo, um, this person's going to be in charge of her trade, like, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But that's what leads to violence and ruins and such a thing. Because, like, what I take out means is, like, the French Revolution, and where they had one, like, these mo the monarchs being mm -hmm. super powerful, yeah. and being the only ones that who had the power to be yeah. rich, and then everyone else was kind of screwed over. So this is kind of Ella's point too. The Ellas are the anarchists in the classroom, it turns out. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, because if that's the anarchist position, right? It's not like get rid of government and everybody do what they want. The idea is get rid of government and the people will finally like treat each other with respect yeah. because you haven't introduced this language of power. Yeah, especially yeah. if you get rid of the money because without mm. money there's no competition to be better than other people or like yeah. the people who don't have as much money don't feel the need to hurt others. That it becomes Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kylie, yeah. Um, so I don't know if someone already said this, but um it's kind of like 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 with the purge, like if we got rid of all the government, it'd be like I I I don't I, I didn't actually watch the purge, but it's like like people would just do crimes. Right. But it wouldn't be crimes. Because yes. there are no crimes. <laughs> right, exactly. So the purge definitely yeah. The Lord of the Flies kind of position that we've we've said Lord of the Flies has so far, which is like if you get rid of those rules, people will act on those rules. People are basically sociopaths underneath the rules of society, and they will get. But the nice thing about the purge is they get that all out of their system, and then society functions really, really well. Yeah, if you just make it through, like you know, maybe make it through the night. Crime, mm -hmm. and if like we're going with the get rid of government, there might be like a week of crime, and yeah. we're like, oh, there's no point. Yeah, so there's a, a kind of uh, catharsis in The Purge that uh, makes that. I just wish those movies were better. It drives me crazy that they aren't better because the idea is so brilliant and the movies are so bad. <laughs> but um, like, if you were to watch them just for the idea, they're fascinating because that feels so true to like be able to purge all your emotions. Brooklyn and Dale and Mel. Along with like, purging like, your emotions, I think um, most societies, like, a lot of the, like, um, they acknowledge that, like, people have, like, these innate, like, aggressions and mm -hmm. things that they need to just, like, um, take out, um, and they provide, like, outlets, like, sometimes through, like, sports or, like, competition and stuff, mm -hmm. um, and, like, even, like, political things, like, yeah. that kind of satisfy, like, that, um, like, aggression and, like, power in a way. Yeah. Um, but when you take that away, like people, um, like I think the purge is kind of arguing that people will, without like that um, structure, they'll try and find their own. They still have to find their own like outlet to get out of the situation. Yeah, um, it's like they broke down the clear distinction between the outlet and the actual running of society. Mm -hmm. And so the hunting becomes the way of life rather than just the period of time when you go and hunt. I think we see that as soon as Jack punches Piggy, especially how that kind of the violence kind of bleeds over into the everyday life. Then, but I think you're right. We have these very strict ways of um, sort of delineating when you can act out and when you have to behave. Like right now, you must behave in this setting in order for things to work. Um, and if, when those things start to break down, when those barriers start to break down, it's real trouble for society and the way it works. And you think of that happening in World War II as well. Ella and then Daylan, right? I don't remember. Actually, I think this is wrong, but I think you said that sentiment does kind of prove that anarchy is not the answer. Mm -hmm. That 
Or hitting Jaden. Or yeah, like I can borrow the Uh-huh. Yeah. Right. But it's like there's this mutual understanding of written law that like in order for services to be exchanged between um you get paid to be a teacher and uh -huh. I get educated to be a major teacher, like there's a certain piece of form that we have to maintain. Yeah. And I think it's really important. And you have all just bought into that, right? And I've bought into that too, but you have all decided that you will behave so that it kind of like upholds my power in the classroom. That's exactly what we're going to be talking about for the, for the rest of the class. So we'll get back to that. Daylin? Um, I was just going to add on to what Jessica was saying. Um, like when we're in the middle, we have that fight and wrong and that we can be those in the middle and push it. And so I feel like in a way, um, like even today, the idea of being punished for doing something mm -hmm. is what's keeping people from doing what they feel mm -hmm. they want to do. Yeah. That's a real behaviorist type position. That's what it's called in psychology, behaviorism. It means that we've been conditioned to do things in the correct way through a system of punishments and rewards, right? And so like, you know, we went potty in the toilet and we got a candy. And every time we went potty in the toilet, we got a candy so that then we knew if you don't go potty in the toilet, mom is mad and that's a punishment. But if you do, you get a candy. So this is the good way to behave. But if we had never had that, we would have been perfectly fine going potty in her pants. <laughs> I like that I'm saying potty. <laughs> Um, for the rest of for, for the rest of our lives type idea. I mean, there's the physical comfort in there too, though. <laughs> Maybe we would learn like I don't actually like this sensation. Um, Ali Rose, yeah, and then we'll, we're gonna move. Oh, and Ella, and then we'll move on. Yeah. Do you think that That's kind of what we've been talking about. Like it, Angelina and Dalen were like, yeah, that people are monsters, right? And our allies are saying like, no, because it's the it's the unequal power structures that creates the monstrosity of people. I don't know. I I am not going to answer the question because I don't know the answer. <laughs> I have no idea what I think. I think I'm with the anarchists, yeah. but I'm not totally sure. Uh, I might be, but I'm also very compelled by we're going to read some Freud, and Freud has a kind of idea about how we are all deeply unhappy because we can't act out on our on our <laughs> craziness. Um, so or I guess it'd be the opposite of craziness because it's like actually who we are. Um, anyway. So I don't really know. I've read too much to have an answer. <laughs> All right, Ella and then Angelina. Um, yeah. So with the whole punishment thing. Yeah. The idea that the only reason that we act good is because the conditioning is wrong in a way to me. Mm -hmm. Because, well, it, naturally, you know after a while, like, you can't do this stuff. Uh. Um, <laughs> but also, it's a thing to say, like, oh, yeah, we don't have crime because of, like, people getting punished. But then you read crime and punishment, and this guy knew that mm. if he murdered this person, he could get extremely punished, but he didn't care. Uh, so to assume that just if you have, if you don't have those punishments, people won't do things is wrong because people still do things still in their mind. That is also going to come into the, the thing that we are going to read about upholding power and then when power breaks down. So hang on to that thought. We're going to get back to it. Angelina? Um, yeah. yeah. Got it. Got it. So because inequality is this innate feature, um, maybe there's no way to escape the people who will always be acting out and whether or not that's to seek power or not, like, so that you need some way to kind of sequester them, get rid of them. Just kill them. Or we could just kill them and then society works. Or just like fine. have a little certain island where they can go if they feel like they need a murder and like come to me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just go on to the island, have yeah. a good time. What is Australia, Australia or Georgia? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I was just gonna say, I felt bad for not providing any like the police statement for um, the Carlos argument. Oh, and I was just gonna say, um, it's just the part where I was thinking about that. The part where Jack like goes to counter the pig, mm 
Yeah. He like has a weapon and he's like there's this um dojin who is the bondman that he's the hunter who uses the killer and he just tries everybody. Uh-huh. And he like gets so close to killing that he just can't. And there's no yes. explanation for us why. Because they even bring up like you just have to kill it because it's just what it's throw. And like and he even describes them for you like I'm kind of like you can't stab it, what are you doing? Like you're not dead. Yeah. Like he knows exactly what you're doing. He's motivated to do it. Let's look and at that section. He's only like motivated towards violence after others are like, well, then you're not a real hunter. Why? You know, like when it's it's social authority. authority. And that's what I think about like inequality yeah. and by like um, the pressure of leadership. It's that point. Like awesome point. So go to page 31 if it's the same. Let's see. 31 for me starts, they were in the beginning of the thick forest. Excellent. Plus, I get the cool cover. <laughs> All right. So at the bottom of that, this is them chasing down a piglet, right? And it says, uh, Jack's face. So the piglet tore loose from the creepers and scurried into the undergrowth. They were left looking at each other in the place of terror. Jack's face was white under the freckles. He noticed that he still held the knife aloft and brought his arm down, replacing the blade in the sheath. Then they all three laughed, and I think the word here is so important, ashamedly, and began to climb back to the track. And Jack starts to, like, I was choosing a place, said Jack. I was just waiting for a moment to decide where to stop him. And you should stick a pig, said Ralph fiercely. They always talk about sticking a pig. You cut a pig's throat to let the blood out, said Jack. Otherwise, you can't eat the meat. Why didn't you? They knew very well why he had it. Because of the enormity of the knife descending and cutting into living flesh. Because of the unbearable blood. So... I don't think this totally discounts the other passage in this that talks about civilization being the one that keeps them from acting out. But this little section here, the knife descending and cutting into living flesh because of the unbearable blood, um, that also could be evidence for this idea that there is a kind of morality that is innate in us that prevents us from killing. Um, a kind of like moral order that is just universal that we all believe in. Others? Yeah. Does there have to be a difference between them? I wonder. Mm. I don't think you have to believe that morality would be learned, though. Yeah, morality, and that's, I think, where they're coming from. They're like, morality could be instinctual. And the civilization argument is that morality needs to be learned. It's like, That's a great way of putting it, actually. Yeah, it's like if you say instinct is just to kill animals, but then if you went up to a puppy, your instinct isn't to kill it, it's to pet it. So, oh. Yeah, so that's where the moral comes in, that you don't want to kill it. Yeah. All right. We're going to... Oh, Emberly was just about to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You haven't talked yet. So um, tell me. When I was right here, um, when we, like, obsessed with those, like, survival books, like going in the wild, like the land. Like hatchet? Yeah, like uh -huh. hatchet. I'm talking about that specific book. And I feel like um like it talks a lot about like how like we're like truly like kind of like part of nature. And so like when we get into nature, like we like I don't know, there's still like variants, but like we kind of like kill stuff because we have to, but then it's like more of a respect and it's mm -hmm. like dismissal of life rather than like violent stabbing. And I feel like that kind of dissolved this society. Yeah. Like, especially with like World War II, where you guys grew up, it's like hearing about the Nazis and stuff. It's just like a lot of violence. And I feel like that's kind of where that takes place, especially with Jack. Like, yeah. it seems like he has some sort of like trauma or something. Like, he's just like not quite right. Even. And they're removed from the violence, and yet they're kind of obsessed with it. So mm -hmm. we've identified the Marxist. We've got the anarchist, and now uh, Emberly is the Marxist, because it's Karl Marx who talks about how one of the reasons that um, we are so violent in society is because we've been removed from the realities of production. And especially he talks about that with meat, right? Mm -hmm. And so we can eat as much, I mean, I'm not a vegetarian anymore, but I feel immensely guilty about it. So like, you can eat as as much meat as you want because you never have to kill the cow. If you had to kill the cow, would you eat the meat? No, no, I wouldn't either. No, because I, I have would. to look that cow in the eyes because I just go. Yeah, and you have to like see it interact with its fellow cow friends, and like I just heard that cows have best friends and that their milk gets like sours if they're not like hanging out with their best friend all the time. Like, 
why are we eating them? And, but the reason yeah. we're eating them is because we don't have to think about it, right? And so we don't, the same reason that we might vote for people who uh, would be perfectly happy sending us to war because we don't actually have to go to war, many of us, you know, most mm -hmm. of us. Um, so Beverly's the Marxist. <laughs> okay. um, sorry. I'm like the only one that's totally killing cow. <laughs> You're like, yes, I'm hungry. Yeah. Give me the burger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> brought up being taught these certain things but yeah we still have to learn for ourselves what the consequences are mm -hmm. so i feel like when all these boys are, are not saying but are stuck on this island they're experimenting with mm -hmm. things they have never been able to do on the mainland to see how it makes them feel yeah. or what kind of punishment is going to be a little society right to give them. right so maybe eventually these things would kind of iron themselves out because they would learn the punishments. They would learn the natural consequences. Okay, I really do want to move on. So last last uh, comments from Ella's. Ella here. Okay, so I feel like with what she was saying, like um, you can teach yourself not to be KY anymore if you don't think that's what you're telling you to do wrong. So it's like when you lick a battery, it's like uh, I used to lick a battery. Like, um, <laughs> but tell. like my dad the other day was like had the bigger one. Uh -huh. I was, he was like, oh, you need to test if it's a thing to lick it. And I licked it, and it shocked my tongue. So from the bad, you were like, okay, never mind, maybe that's not right. So through, like, if we didn't have government to tell us what was wrong, if you murdered someone and you just saw people's reactions to, you know, morally seeing another species of their own die, mm -hmm. it would be like, okay, never mind, don't do that. Because your moral compass is so so strong and maybe it wouldn't need to go that far maybe you punch someone and you see everyone's reactions and then you realize i shouldn't violate other people's like bodies yeah oh i was gonna say i absolutely agree with her like the opposite of violence uh-huh yeah and i found that we just enjoy i think being violent i just think that it's all like comfortable to be really dominant mm. and that came with the symbol of violence and it's like i really actually don't think we would be violent i think we would be dominant yeah, and we kind of get that from that little section that we read, right? And um, kind of the way that he's ashamed at first, but realizes it's what he has to do to be in the position he wants. Okay, so I want to watch more Boys Alone so that you can see how this discussion is kind of playing out in Boys Alone. <laughs> it kind of is. If, if there had been like multiple Kevin McAllisters in one house, I feel like they would behave this way. Okay, guys, so I am going to share the screen. Oops, I just opened maps on it. So you should be able to watch the video with us. We're going to watch about 15 minutes of this. Ooh, but I do need to stop the recording or they're going to flag me for copyright. Hang on. Right? Like, <laughs> 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 